In this video, a friend of mine is dropping a magnet through a copper pipe, and watch how long it takes for the magnet to make it through. So then I took a video of it from above, and you can see that it's almost hovering as it moves through the copper pipe. So what's going on? Well, as the magnet falls through the copper pipe, it's inducing a current in the copper wire, um, and that copper wire is then producing a magnetic force which is slowing the descent of the magnet. It seems magical, but it's simply a magnetic force, which always occurs if we have an electric charge or a magnet interacting with another electric charge or another magnet. And so what are magnets? Remember, they're essentially magnetic dipoles. They have a north and they have a south. And a way to visualize that is like a vector that goes right through the middle. And so the north is at the tip of the arrow and the south is at the end of the arrow. And you can't break a magnet in, in half. What you'll get is going to be just two new magnetic dipoles. You can never separate the north and the south pole. Now let's say we put that magnet in a magnetic field. What will it do? Well, there will be a magnetic force that it, that's going to cause it to orient towards that magnetic field. But it's not just magnets that are influenced by other magnets. If we have a moving charge moving through a magnetic field, there will be a magnetic force on that. And we can use the right-hand rule to figure out where that force is going to be. And so a magnetic dipole, remember, has a north and a south. And an example of one could be the Earth. An example of one could be a compass needle. It's simply a tiny little magnet. And so if we put these inside a magnetic field, there will be a magnetic force which causes them to orient towards that magnetic field. Now all magnetic fields aren't just linear like this. And so if we take a compass and put it all the way around a magnet like this, they'll turn every which way, which seems confusing until you start to visualize where these magnetic field lines go. And a good way to do that is to use iron filings on top of it, and you'll start to see how each of these uh, magnetic dipoles is orienting itself towards the magnetic field. Now scientists knew for a long time that there was a relationship between magnets and electric charge. But when they would hook a wire up and put a bunch of uh, compass needles around it, nothing would happen until they ran current through it. And as you run current through that wire, all those compass needles are going to line up towards a magnetic field. And so the moving charge is producing these magnetic fields. And so a way to figure out which way they're moving is with the right hand rule. And so if we look at this wire right here, the electric current is coming towards you. And so what you do is you point your thumb in the direction of current flow, and then your fingers are going to wrap around in the direction of that magnetic field. And so if we have a wire like this, so the current is moving from the bottom to the top, can you use your right hand to figure out where that magnetic field is going to be? It's simply going to wrap around like that. It's going to wrap around thumb in the direction of the current and just wrap your fingers around. But it's not just right there, it's going to be all throughout the wire. And so an interesting question might be, well, that's a linear wire. What, it, what happens if we take the wire itself and put that in a loop? What's the magnetic field going to look like? Well, it'll look like this. And so now we've got the current coming in on this side. So the current's coming in on this side. And so you could just kind of run your thumb around that loop. And what you'll notice is as you move your thumb around the loop, the magnetic field is always going to go right through the middle on the inside of that wire. And so by running current through a loop of wire, what you really create is a magnetic dipole. You have that magnetic field produced right through the middle of the loop. And so let me show you an example of how that works. Now we've got a compass. This is a PHET simulation. I'm moving the compass around this magnet. So you can see that it's starting to orient towards the magnetic field produced by the magnet. And so we can turn on those magnetic field lines and you can see that it's orienting towards them perfectly. It's lining right up. Now what we can do is run electricity through a wire. I've now got a compass moving it around this wire, but it's not responding. And that's because there's no current. When I turn it on, then we can see how the compass is starting to orient towards that mag magnetic field that's being produced by the current in the wire itself. And so we could turn on those magnetic field lines, and you can see it looks just like a magnet. We can actually, if we're careful, move it right through the middle of that loop. Now what would happen if we increase the number of wires to the electric field, or the, rather the magnetic field, you can see that it's getting greater and greater. And that's why there's this link between electricity and magnetism. And so a neat experiment you can do with this is using a solenoid. And so what we have is a wire that's just twisted over and over and over again. Now in the lab, a really good thing to use as a solenoid would just be a slinky. You can stretch it out on a table, you can kind of tape it down or clamp it down so it doesn't move. Uh, in this lab, what I've got here is a power supply, so that's producing current. And then we have a rheostat, so we can, we can change the amount of current that's actually making it through the wire. 
And so before we get to the actual lab, where is the magnetic field going to be produced? Let's say the current is moving from the right towards the left. Where's the magnetic field going to be? It's going to be right through the middle of the solenoid like that. And so we can use a magnetic probe. There's lots of probeware you can use where you can put the magnetic probe right in the middle of the solenoid and it's going to measure in Teslas the strength of that magnetic field. And so I can think of a number of different labs that you could do here. So we could change the current. What do you think is going to happen as we increase the current to the strength of the magnetic field? What else could we do? We could have the wires clamping on at different points and so we could have different coils inside our solenoid and see how the number of coils is influencing that magnetic field. Or we could take our slinky and bring it really close to itself or stretch it way out. We could increase the distance of that solenoid and we could measure that magnetic field as well. It's probably safe to say that you have a very good idea of how the magnetic field of a bar magnet looks like. But do you know the four important properties of magnetic field lines? To find out, let's begin by plotting some magnetic field lines. We need a pen, plotting compass, and a magnet. My magnet doesn't tell me which is the North Pole and which is the South, but we'll find out soon. Place your magnet in the middle of the page and trace around it. Place the plotting compass near the magnet. Mark the direction that the compass needle points by drawing a dot. After the first plot, move the compass so that the back of the needle lines up with the dot. Repeat this until you reach the end of the magnet. Join the points together to show a field line. I'll also draw an arrow here to show the direction that the needle is pointing in. I'll do all of the above again with another starting point. Looking at the field that we've plotted, we can figure out the four main properties of magnetic field lines. Number one, magnetic field lines never cross each other, they never overlap. Number two, they always point from the north pole of the magnets to its south pole, north into south, so that must mean that this is north and this is south. Number three, they are continuous. The only reason these lines have been cropped out here is because I've simply run out of space. Number four, where the lines are closer together, the magnetic force is the strongest, and that's at the poles of the magnets. What does a magnetic field look like? Let us do an activity to visualize this magnetic field. We need a bar magnet and iron filings. Stick the magnet on top of the paper. Now. Sprinkle some iron filings on the paper. Tap the paper slightly such that iron filings arrange themselves. Observe the pattern made by the iron filings. If you look at the pattern, you will see that the iron filings have arranged themselves in curved lines that originate from one end of the magnet and terminate at the other. Also observe that the concentration of the lines is more at the poles of the magnet. Most of the lines run from one pole to the other. If we draw a diagram of this on a paper, it will look like this. The long curved lines shown along a magnet are called the magnetic lines of force. They run from the north pole to the south pole. The space in which the lines of force are spread around a magnet is called the magnetic field. The characteristics of the lines of force are, they attempt to form closed loops from pole to pole. They never intersect. They all have the same strength. The number of lines of forces per unit area determines the strength of magnetic field at that point. Did you know that the earth has a magnetic field? Go and find out more about it.